Hello, one, two, one, two. Hello. 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 Are you ready? You are ready. Yes, I see. Please, you guys should give us peace a little bit. So good. I speak. My name is Emeka Ubuonye. I am a lawyer and I speak in my capacity as counsel, one of the counsel for Mr. Inambekano, leader of the IPOB. As you all are aware, yesterday I was in court with him in the company of all the lawyers. My coming into this case at this time is calculated to speed up the process of resolving this case, which has been in court for a very long time. As you all know, this is today one of the most difficult and trying cases in Nigeria. Several matters are at stake. We understand that there are followers of uh, Namdekan in millions who are all expectant for an end to this extraordinary ordeal. The case is in court and every effort is being made at this moment through my input and the continued input of my learned friends, the other lawyers that are involved in this case. They're all working very hard. And um, uh, coming in at this stage, we're going to make sure that that effort is doubled. We have to increase our fire and power. Our defense resources and capabilities will be strengthened. We're going to try to shorten the time for the process to end this particularly difficult uh, experience that Nandi and others are going through. I am also aware, because the report got to us today, that some of the people who went to visit him in prison were prevented from seeing him. This report got to me. We are looking into it. We will thoroughly investigate it. And I will make sure that proper representation is made to the appropriate agencies of the government to make sure that his visitation rights are preserved. It is bad enough that someone had to be in detention for that length of time. It is going to be even harder for him to be denied access to visitors. Uh, from the little we know, it would seem in the past that the prison authorities had been cooperative. I don't know particularly what triggered the escalation today or the new complaints that we got. All I can assure you is that every step will be made. It is part of his right as someone in custody that he enjoys certain rights. Within the prison regulation, he must be able to have visitors who come to see him, who come to give moral support, especially in the case of this magnitude. I wouldn't say much now except to assure you that every step will be taken to ensure that there is no unusual impediment to his rights. On the bigger question about this trial, it is ultimately going to be a trial over the rights of a person to express himself. The government had laid far-reaching allegations. There were 11 counts at the beginning. Those have been whittled down to five counts. Two of them border on treason and conspiracy to treason. These are serious charges in the paper. The question which we, the defense lawyers, are asking is where is the evidence? We need to see the evidence because so far the government has not proffered any evidence to substantiate these allegations. In fact, I went through the order 
of the judge in recent time when the judge considered portions of the charges and when the judge preserved the treasonable ch charges. It is remarkable that in the order of the court, the court admitted that the state has not preferred any evidence whatsoever. All the state says is that it has evidence. But anybody can say that if after one year of his arrest and detention, the state has not put forward any evidence to indicate that there is a likelihood, even a possibility, of sustaining a case on the merits, on treasonable grounds, if they haven't done this for this length of time, it is fair to say that the state doesn't have such evidence. And if the state doesn't have such evidence, it is fair to say that these allegations are doomed to failure in the end. But as defense counsel, all I can tell you is that we're going to make our best effort and we're going to be prepared for whatever the state is going to bring as its evidence. I think more will be said about this in the course of time. I will urge all of you, his supporters and um, the media, to be attentive to the details in this case. This is no longer time for speculation. This is time for concrete issues, concrete evidence. We want to deal with the evidence. As a lawyer, I want to contend with and confront the evidence of the state. Whenever the state deems it appropriate to present its evidence, and I hope the state does so very soon. And something else I will say before I end. The strength of a state, the strength of a country, is not measured by its ability to lock up its citizens. It's actually measured by the opposite. The strength of a country is measured by the compassion it can show. The strength of a country is measured by the ability of the powerful to care for the weak. These men have been way too long in detention. Whatever the excuse could be today doesn't seem to make sense. It seems to be in the interest of all, including the interest of the government, to bring this old deal to an early end. So it's, uh, as I said, the Nigerian constitution is also on trial. The test of our democracy, it is the test of the equality of rights in this country. And I will also say, Nigeria is too big to fail. Nigeria is too big to be caught up in some of the errors we are seeing today, because the entire continent of Africa ought to look up to Nigeria. They ought to look up to Nigeria's method of administration of criminal justice. They have to ask the critical questions. Is it fair? Is it fair? Is it just? Can anyone look at what has transpired in this case for the past uh, uh, 16 months today? Can they look at it and say, this is the best of this country? Can they say this is the best this country is capable of? I doubt to say no. Nigeria ought to demonstrate examples that other countries in Africa, in this region, could fail. And so far, Nigeria has failed in this case. But it's not too late. Nigeria could still wake up and live up to its measure as a giant of Africa and do justice in this case and bring it to an early closure and end the pain and suffering that these men have been going through all this while. Thank you. All right. The question I want to ask now is that uh, the, uh, the governors of uh, Southeast Expansion they said they will make an effort to meet uh, the federal government uh, as a part of the negotiation. And as a council in this matter, your client, uh, even now they can, are they willing to negotiate? Do you think they will say that uh, they will resolve the matter? Uh, well, it is a very important thing to understand that what we are dealing with in this case is actually a matter of freedom of speech. It's a matter of freedom of speech. It, it, somebody could say he wants the Afro right to fantasize about the Afro, to wish about the Afro. That cannot be a basis to try him. The critical question is what step has he taken? What law has he violated? Who has he harmed? In all of these things, we want to look at any one victim who could say he suffered in any way concerning the statements of Nambi. Not, it's not everybody that's going to come and say nice things about you. People could be critical of the government. People could call Nigeria Z. That is freedom of expression. As unpleasant as it might be, it still falls within the context of free speech. So renouncing Biafra, I don't think that is the crime. Renouncing Biafra or the opposite of renouncing Biafra cannot be a crime. And that's not why he's being tried to look at it. If you look at the charges, it's not about Biafra. However, I will say this, if the government shows serious commitment to liberty, 
if the government could identify a particular concern that it has, then it would be possible to look at these concerns and explore ways to have a rapprochement. As I can speak to you today, the government has not indicated any specific concern, any specific measure that they think will give them support. Until we have one, I think it is premature to ask whether Nandu will renounce anything. He has not been requested to renounce it, and nobody has indicated that a mere declaration of a desire, a desire to pull out of the country. It is a political debate. It is it's occurring in Northern Ireland, where you have a country from a bigger nation formed by different units, from tensions exist. Somebody is going to come and wish that if he were a smaller unit of the bigger country, he would be better off. It is a self translate to anything. It's a debate. I don't think that a mere invitation to a discussion of Nigerian unity Absolutely not. Okay, so okay, the secret trial. Sir, 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 let me rephrase this one question. The governor, okay, I'm going to contact. Yes, sir. No, I, it's, um, it's late. It is late, but better late than never. For the Nigerian, the leadership in the eastern part of the country, the governors particularly, and any other set of politicians, influence senators and others, they must understand that the continued ordeal of Nam, the continued trial and the context brings a big debt upon the identity of these people. It brings a big question because millions of their citizens under these governors are demanding for some solution. It is a troubling situation. I wouldn't expect the governors to remain calm. And for them to begin to talk, it's a positive thing. I just hope that they will do their hearts find their words and quickly bring this to a resolution. And they do have the capacity, I can say this to them, if the governors of the eastern states were to come together and take a position and present it to the government, I believe the government is going to give audience to them. And that could be a critical turning point in this saga. Okay, sir. The secret trial, what, what is the standard on it? Very well. As you all know, the standard of the world is for trial to the public. It is a key element of due process that a person who is tried is tried in the public. In public means that individuals, anybody in the society can walk into the court and participate and listen to the proceedings. That would have been the case. In the Nandi's case, there was a sudden turn of event last year when the prosecution requested to protect witnesses. It was not clear exactly what they were protecting the witnesses from. But at least statutorily, at that time, there was a charge, a uh, uh, terrorism charge. So though that's one of those charges that Nigerian law had indicated would justify a civil trial. Even at that time, it was problematic because that law that made it possible for them to conduct, or rather, to try to protect witnesses, seemed to have violated Nigerian constitutional premise on open trial. It is critically important that a person who goes to court to testify against the person, they seem to be doing so. People will watch him, people will observe his demeanor. Some of the people in the floor and the gallery might realize that he was lying. They might supply information to the prosecution or the, to the defense with which they could cross-examine such a person. Yeah. It's a problematic thing. It's always going to be problematic, regardless of who it is, regardless of whether it is a Namdi today, regardless of whether it is Tunde tomorrow or Ibrahim tomorrow. Nigerian standard of justice is supposed to be open and available for the government. Of course, this has to be understood in the proper context. Our trials are still done within courtrooms, and courtroom has some confinement to it. It's not a big space to hold a lot. What we expect to be the global standard is that, like you saw in the trials in South Africa, the trial of uh, of Pistorius, the trial was videotaped and beamed to the whole world. That is actually what we call a standard that is higher than the constitutional standard to make it more open to the world. But what transpired in the Nambis case is a regression, a movement below the constitutional standard. But in any event, all that argument seemed to have been altered when the court in the past two hearings, when the court dismissed and quashed the terrorism charge. When the terrorism charge was quashed, 
It meant that we had removed the only statutory premise for, for uh, protection of witnesses. So having gone, we would expect that the basis for um, a protection of witnesses had been removed. And you saw yesterday in argument in court, the prosecution was trying to get the court to maintain the order on protection based on the discretion of the judge. In other words, it's no longer backed up by any statutory premise, and it could only now exist if the judge says so. But for the judge to say so, the judge has to have compelling basis, compelling evidence, a set of facts that will make such protection necessary. I don't want to speak too much about that because we are waiting for the order of the court and as counsel, I don't want to say anything that appears to preempt the order of the court. I just tried to rehash our argument yesterday that there exists no basis for professional witnesses. Counsel, there's this question about well, no. I, 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 I will call such remarks a mere metaphor and uh, uh, you know, figure of speech. From the defense team, we are not thinking in that direction. I think that the governing procedure for this trial is the Administration of Criminal Justice Act uh, of 2015. That is the law, the procedural law, and of course you also know what the substantive uh, uh, statutes are. So the Sharia law thing is not a position that I am conversant with. So all three charges are pending? No, there are five charges pending. I just mentioned two, the most significant of the two of them are two, treason and conspiracy for two. Then there is other, another charge because they said he insulted the president. We have made a position earlier that that falls within his freedom of speech. You can insult anybody. It's a political speech. Thank you.